Okay, so after we discuss, okay, at least we have our Sefanaya and hopefully uh, we can have our Micah wherein uh, one, of the one of the important things that we need to discover sa pro prophecy is we have to know the oracles, no? the, the pronouncement, the message na binibigay ng text. Kasi pag hindi natin nakita yung mga oracles na yun, no? I, we will have a failure to really unite that, the entire book and then get what is the message of the book. No? For example, this Micah. Okay. So it there are there are ano itong Micah the the main the main question the main theme in the book of Micah is who is the Lord no at makikita niyo rito sa 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 tatlong outline na ito is a common word uh given by Micah to the entire uh Jewish people no uh and, and then the word here okay So, pag tinignan niyo yung Micah as they prophesy, as he prophesy in the Israel and the Judah, makikita niyo yung uh, curse and then the blessing. Okay? So, sa first two chapter, you will see, ito yung dalawang oracles na yun, no? the oracle, The blessing oracle and then the curse oracle. Okay, so merong uh, denunciation sa judgment on Israel and then the lament on the exile. But the blessing is in chapter 2, the book of Micah gave the hope of the remnant's return with God as shepherd, gate, and king. Meaning to say, uh, Micah gave a, a very particular message of uh judgment to Israel and to the entire Judah but he only gave their hope to the Jew to, to Judah that uh, they will return with God as a their shepherd gate and king so may curse may may pronouncement of judgment and then there is a blessing okay so in Micah 3 to 5 ganun din Okay, so ito naman ha, sa libro nyo ito, makita nyo lahat ng oracle mag ma mahalagang makita ng isang nagbabasa ng aklat ng prophecy. Without you give, giving uh, or identifying the the oracles of this uh, particular of a particular prophetic book Mahirapan tayo mag-interpret. Okay? Actually, uh, in Micah, part in particularly with Micah, there is a question in Micah 6. And then sabi doon, Micah 6 verse 8, What does the Lord require of thee? Okay? So it is also speak of the gospel. Okay? So, uh, pag nagbabasa tayo ng text ng Old Testament, we always need to see that the gospel is not just a particular a message about okay yung life, uh, birth, life, death, and resurrection of Christ. Okay, the gospel is very uh, in inclusive of all. No, sabi dun sa Micah 6 verse 8, What does the Lord require of thee but to do justly to walk uh, to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. Okay? So this is a particular text that talks about the, the entirety of the gospel that speaks also to to what a, a believer should live sa New Testament, no? Kaya uh, talagang sinamaray si Jesus yung buong mga commandment, lahat ng oracles into two great commandment. Actually, when you when God said he summarized it into two, when he gave the two great commandment, it is the summary of the entire Old Testament oracles, uh, laws, you no know, statutes of God for the entire Israel people. So it's not really just the the summary of the Torah. Okay? but it is a summary of the entire old testament so 
kung makita ninyo yung wisdom ng Panginoon when he are when he is uh discussing this uh this Old Testament text then he made a summary okay uh the the, the greatest command is here the following the first is love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind okay and then love your neighbor as yourself okay and then love them as i have loved you and then the question is saan kinuha ng panginoon yun that is the entire that, that is really the entirety of the entire uh, old testament uh, text bakit it is a, it is in reference and in rebuke to the entire pharisaical mind the pharisaical community where in Uh, they instituted this oral laws this, this uh, additional oral laws additional ceremonial laws that corrupted the, that corrupted the the message of the entire old testament gospel but as micah gave a very good summary okay he gave a good summary of what the, the gospel of the old testament is say what does the lord requires of you no So ang ang requirement ng Panginoon is uh, what does the Lord require to to do uh, to do justice to love mercy to walk humbly that is the gospel no that is the commandment that is the expectation of God so meaning to say in Micah in the Old Testament dapat nakikita natin what is really the great commandment uh in the Old Testament what what is the gospel being being preached there So kaya yung Micah it was really divided into three and then uh, the word is the common word is here. So may oracle of judgment but there is also an oracle of blessing. Okay? So the hope uh, Micah and his book he gave a very good conclusion in chapter 7 Uh, stating his conclusion, stating his confidence that there, that our God is the God who forgive, okay, and then there will be a restoration of blessing as in the days of old. And then uh, he made a very good remark: "Who is like the Lord?" So meaning, Micah is a very good book. It's a very good prophetic book. In lining up the oracles. So ngayon, i-encapsulate natin yung five hermeneutical principle when we are dealing with prophetic oracles. Okay? Number one, prophet's message centers on, but not though not limited by, conditions of the original audience. So when you are taking in account Okay, when you're taking into account all the prophetic books, you have to understand it on the conditions by the original audience. Hindi tayo dapat mag-jump into conclusion agad na ito ay eschatology, ito ay rapture. You have to take back your your uh, hermeneutical line with regards to who is the original audience. So the message of the prophet is centered on the conditions of the original audience. That is okay, the historical context of prophetic oracles. <clears throat> Kaya mahalaga when we are dealing with prophet, we are also dealing with history. No? So in dealing with some uh, prophetic oracles, yung political development in the ancient near east do sa panahon ng uh, exile during the 9th of 5th uh, BC is vital to interpretation so meaning in our interpretation of the oracles of the prophet books we have to take into consideration all the historical development all the cultural development political developments with regards to the society that the that the Israel and the tribe of Judah and Benjamin, the southern and the northern kingdom, live upon. So, mahalaga yung historical context. So, ang prophet po, hindi siya binabasa na as is, katu- di siya katulad ng narrative, hindi siya katulad ng prophecy, ay, ng, ng psalm, ng poetry, 
that we can read it on a standalone basis, especially the Proverbs. We just need to uh, we just need to encapsulate in our mind na ito ay standalone passages. But the prophetic book, especially the oracles, is not a standalone text. You have to know what is the what is the the political development, what are the historical context given on the book. Kaya mahalaga yung commentary. Okay? Mahalaga yung tinatawag na research. So ako po, pag nagpre-preach ako about uh, using a prophetic text, especially it's really a prophetic text, an oracle, uh, I'm really, really made uh, making my research. I will not sleep until my research is final. Okay? That is why, sabi natin, yung Jeremiah 29.11 is very mo, most uh, misused and abused text in the entire prophetic books because it was being used for, for the present generation in an application where it is not possible because the, the, the context of the, or the historical context of the text is really not on the things that uh, the interpreters would love to do. Meron akong uh, pinapakinggan kagabi na isang preacher. He's, uh, he's a very known to many, especially to CWM. Uh, he's very known, but uh, I really, really sad, but because he has a lot of things to, to say, and yet uh, identifying the text, identifying the historical context of the text, is that really present. Okay? So, mahalaga. No? Pag prophetic book, mayroong historical context. So, si Micah, yung prophecy niya sa remnant come as an ironic denunciation to Judah who has just survived the siege of Jerusalem by the scenic rib. So, ibig sabihin, uh, prophetic siya talaga kasi kakaano lang eh. Okay? kaka-survive lang ng Jerusalem sa sa battle against Sinakrib. But again, the promise of the blessing in chapter 1 and 2 is that the, the remnant of Israel, the remnant of Judah will return with God as their shepherd king. So aside from the historical context, you have to know the theological context of the prophetic oracles. You have to encapsulate the law, the blessing, and curses. Kailangan makita nyo bakit bakit ba pinarusahan yung yung ano yung Israel. Kasi we are when we are dealing with prophets, we are also dealing with the question why God is punishing Israel? Why God is cursing the entire Israel? Judging the entire Israel? No, why he is cursing that and then the, At the bottom line, he is also providing a blessing. Kaya maganda pag-aralan yung prophet eh. Kasi doon mo makikita yung skills mo in identifying the law and then uh, encapsulating with the, the curses of God, the judgment of God. And then the bottom line is also God is providing the remnant, the hope or the blessing. Okay? So different oracles, it might be a curse okay, or the blessing. that centers on the life of in the land no consequently prophetic blessing and promise rooted in the restoration of life in the land okay so this is also one of the the argument of nt right in his hermeneutical uh, essays wherein god is not going to get this church there is no such thing as rapture Uh, because only John, uh, John Darby is uh, preaching about rapture, but there will always just be the restoration of life in the land. Okay? So some are, some people who denounce rapture is always using some text in the uh, Old Testament prophecy. That is why very careful tayo in identifying is this type of restoration is eschatological in nature or ito ba ay isang simpleng uh, restoration that God would make when Israel repent and turn back against them. There will be the shuv and nakam, okay? the repentance of Israel 
and return of Israel to the Lord. So, dapat careful tayo. Okay? So, hindi dapat na tayo po ay nagja-judge agad dun sa text. So, hermeneutical principle number one, taking into consideration the original uh, conditions of the audience being written by the writer. So, kung sino man yon, dapat nakikita natin yon. Mahalaga mahalaga 'yon kasi hindi hindi ka makakapag-interpret ng maayos. Okay? Do we get that? May question po do sa hermeneutical number one. Okay, wala. So let's go to number two. Okay? Prophet's language shared by other prophets provides continuity of thought. among prophetic books. Prophets are recognize, recognize other prophets' word as authoritative. Oh. Medyo allergic muna ako dito sa word na uh, authoritative. May issue ito eh, but I will share later on. No, uh, Prophets recognize other prophets as authoritative revelation. So they know So may mga counterpart yan. Yung major prophets, alam nila kung sino yung mga ka-counter. Kasi ka-minister nila yun eh. Okay? It doesn't mean that the major prophets only contains really the, the entire revelation of God. The minor prophet is just a minor thing. Okay? That, the reason why they are called minor because of the fact na maliit yung span of their ministry. Yung time span, yung time framework. But the revelation, both from the major prophets and the minor prophets, they're all relevant and vital, important, so to speak, major revelations from the Lord. Okay? So, dapat makita ninyo yung recognition, yung uh, tinatawag nating harmony among the prophet, prophecy books. If in the in New Testament, we are always looking at the harmony of the, 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 uh, the gospel book, Okay, di ba? Malagi rin nakikita yung harmony ng Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But in, in a, a, a good student of the word of the Lord, we always see the harmony of the prophetic book. Sabi na sir, mahirap kasi uh, 17 books yan eh. Hindi naman lahat yan, mahirap i-determine kasi some of those ay maiikli ang mga, ano, maiikli ang time frame, no? Ito ang Micah, se- seven chapters. So, ibig sabihin, di- magkaroon ka ng devotions na uh, one week. Micah, tapos. di ba? Dali, Obadiah. Isang araw mo nga lang babasahin yun eh. But you have to see the, you have to encapsulate all the thoughts of the prophetic books. So, strong linguistic and conceptual similarities. between prophets of the same era are significant in terms of understanding the contents of the prophecy. So, tinitingnan natin yung linguistic nito kasi some prophet, prophetic books, they are also written in Aramaic. Hindi lahat yan Hebrew. Okay? So, titingnan nyo yung ling- 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 lingwahe nila At meron ba silang similarity in terms of revelations sa, ng Panginoon sa kanila? Tingnan nyo ito. Si Micah ho, okay, meron siyang at least sa cited example, dalawang cited na contemporary. Si Isaiah and Jeremiah. So nakita nyo itong text na to, si Micah, okay, Makita niyo yung restoration niya sa Micah 4, sa Isaiah 2. Binigay din ng Panginoon kay, kay Isaiah. So nagkita yung dalawang minds nila. Sa so, Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah cites Micah in Jere- Jeremiah 26.18. So Micah 3.12 ang sinasite. So ibig sabihin, nagkakaroon sila ng tinatawag na recognition of their uh, contribution. Kaya mayroon tinatawag silang intra Uh, inter-prophet uh, allusion. Si prophet ina-allude, kino-quote yung isang prophet. 
Di ba? So, yun yung hermeneutical principle number two. Okay? Yung language ng prophet, yung mga sharing of prof, prophet's thought within other's uh, work or literature provides continuity among prophetic book. Kaya, pag binasa niyo ang prophet, eh, naalam natin, ano ba ang kinds of prophet ito? Pre-exilic, exilic, or post-exilic. Inaalam natin yan. Pero ito, guilty, ta- guilty tayo lahat kapag nagsisimula tayo ng preaching from the prophetic book. Guilty tayo lahat dito. Tell me if I'm wrong, ha? But I am also as guilty as others. When nag-preach tayo ng text from the prophet, hindi na tayo nagtitingin na commentary sa narratives niya. Hindi natin hinahanap. Kaya minsan yung text na mi-misalign natin doon sa tamang intended meeting, meaning niya sa audience. Okay? Uh, that is also a, a given fact that I have to admit in the early onset of my preaching ministry. But this principle number two is very, very helpful for us. No, the language of the prophetic books okay, provides continuity among prophetic book. Hindi siya napuputol, hindi siya natatapos sa isa, tuloy-tuloy siya. Kaya pag binasa nyo siya, tinitingnan nyo siya. Halimbawa, okay, pag binasa mo yung Esther, Nehemiah, Esra, dapat babasahin mo rin yung Hagay, Malakay, Zechariah, kasi mga posiksilik sila eh. Pagsasamahin nyo yung mga thoughts nila. Okay? para hindi ka naliligaw. Okay? Yun yung ibig sabihin nun. The language of other prophets provide continuity. Okay? Number three, prophetic oracles also are frequently cast as typology extension of historical narrative. Meaning to say, in a prophetic philosophy of history, Israel's present is informed by its past, is filled and ultimately fulfilled in the future. So the future, interpreted in light of the past, create a link between memory and hope. So, yung oracle sila, frequently typology of the historical narrative. Okay, minsan yung mga prophetic oracles natin, ito yung continuation ng isang narratives. Okay? So, the use of historical motif in denunciation oracles of Israel present, okay, we can see in Matthew, no, Israel history is a witness against present disobedience. Kaya nga, si Micah and even in Hosea, uh, he, they call it, you are your patriarch Jacob or Israel. So, ano ba yung mga four categories of prophetic typology? Okay, number one, cosmological creation imagery and historical redemption. Okay, redemption completes with new heavens and new earth. Creation itself requires redemption. Okay, so yung yung history ng yung cosmological creation imagery. So yan din ng mga questions ng mga scholars. Kaya pagka merong Uh, bago mga scholars, like for example, uh, tawag ito si N.T. Wright, ang kanilang claim is there, uh, there is no uh, rapture, there is no second coming, oh, there is no rapture of the church, but there is just uh, the redemption, the, re- the, the uh, restoration of the new heaven and new earth here in this planet earth. Okay? So sa New Pauline perspective, ganun ang kanilang tingin. Pero siyempre sa ating uh, nagbabasa ng text na fundamentals, ibig sabihin, uh, classical yung ating thinking when it comes to theology and interpreting the the prophetic books, we'll always see that uh, the new even the new heavens or uh, the creations itself requires redemption. So, isa sa mga typology yung cosmological creation imagery and its relationship towards uh, historical redemption. 
Pangalawa, future redemption echoes through historical prototype. Okay? So we always perceive that Exodus is a prototype of universal redemption and present in almost pre all pre-exilic prophets, both of them giving the context of judgment and hope. Meaning to say, uh, yung future redemption ay meron siyang typology na nangyari years ago no and ang common prototype ng ano ng mga writer of the prophetic book is the Exodus uh, event okay so lagi yung binabalikan yung nangyari ginawa ng Panginoon para sa inyo they are always looking back number three, the spatial images in the place of redemption yung mentioning of the word Eden in this text Zion no yung uh, Jerusalem meaning the peace of God okay and then the presence of God those imagery and place of redemptions were always mentioned sa mga text ng prophetic book bakit Eden is also a place of redemption am i right okay may wala po ba tayo that uh, Eden is a place also of redemption? We always perceive that the place of redemption is the Calvary. But Eden is also a place of redemption. Bakit? Bakit siya naging place of redemption? Doon po kasi yes. Mr. Love. Yes? Yung Bakit? Ng skin, animal skin, pastor. Okay, very good, no? Uh, we're in this is that is Eden is a place where God replaced uh animal skin the fig yes. leaves na ginawa ni Adam, Adam and Eve. So that is a typology. Nung bakit ang Eden lang sinasabi as a place of redemption. Okay? So yung Jerusalem is also perceives to be the place of redemption because Jerusalem is the uh, very good uh, place no kasi ang, Jeru- ang Calvary ay malapit sa Jerusalem Meron tayong tayo tinatawag na bio- biographical typology and the agents of redemption Okay ayan na no lagi lagi tayong tinitinitig natin sa mga prophetic book yan no yung tinatawag na typology of biography and are they agents of redemptions like Abraham Jacob so okay so tong apat na to okay are categories of prophetic typology so tinitingnan natin yan when when we are go, when we are identifying the blessing and promise oracle okay may image si ba diyan meron bang a historical prototype na sinasabi bakit sir? Anong kinailangan nito? Kasi tinitingnan natin sa prophetic oracle yung mga typological extension ng historical narrative. So ito bang narrative na nilagay dito ng prophetic book na ito ay in line doon sa historical narrative na kanyang uh, kinasamahan. Okay? So that is historical number three. Uh, principle number three. Okay. And then another thing is the prophet's message extend meaning of previous covenant. Okay? Katulad nung nasa number 1 na sa, sa first lesson natin, we are we are always looking for a motive. Okay? The message of the prophet extends meaning of a previous covenant and prophecies. Promises. So, kapag nakita niyo historical motive niya, The motive is they are to be filled and ultimately fulfilled in every subsequent acts of God. Okay? So itong mga text na ito, makikita natin ito lahat. No? For example, si Jeremiah 23 verse 1 to 8. Okay? It shows that David is a paradigm promised king. Okay? An agent through whom God rules. So yung promise of eternity in... Davidic kingdom. Okay? 
So lahat ito ay mga tinatawag nating uh, pag nakakita po kayo, nagbabasa kayo ng text ng prophet, ibig sabihin you're also looking for the extensions of the covenants and promise. Siguro sanay na sanay na kayo dahil sa narrative pa lang ay naghahanap na kayo niyan. Yung motive, yung blessing sa inyong mga narrative. So, ganun din ang gagawin niya sa mga individual prophetic book. Tingnan ninyo. Kasi itong mga ito, if this is an extension of previous covenant and promises, therefore, ito ang banat sa text na to. Hindi tayo malilito. Okay? For example, yung branch of Jesse. Okay? So the branch of Jesse is really an important uh, historical motif. Bakit? Si Jesse goes beyond uh, King, King David. So meaning, tinitingnan natin ito. Mahalaga kasi ito. Okay? The number five, the prophetic oracles open weave events together that are separate in time and extent of fullness. Okay? Sabi ko dito, pay careful attention to language. Okay? If you sense that there is a dramatic shift of time frame from blessing of resettlement to promise of eschatological rule of God introduced merely by this phrase and it will come about after this. Okay? So when you are looking for this hermeneutical principle number five, you will notice a reconcilable shift in actions. Okay? Kasi ito ang kanilang ginagawa. Yung time frame na yon mahalaga. Okay? So, titignan nyo rin palagi yung shift ng time. Eh, mahalaga yun, no? Yung, yung pagsishift ng oras sa bawat text. Okay? Bakit? Kasi, The meaning of many prophetic texts cannot be truly known prior to their fulfillment. Okay? So it is un- unintelligible intelligible before, unmistakable after. Ito ang aking dikatwiran why I haven't argued with rapture. The time frame of rapture. Okay? Kasi dapat mayroong ultimate fulfillment eh. So dahil ako, ang pagkakaintindi ko sa Bible ay babalik ang Panginoon, hindi ako nakikipag-away whether diyan ay pre-trib, mid-trib, or post-trib. Bakit? Okay, it is unintelligible before, unmistakable after. There's only one day that uh, rapture will always be true. And that is when it happens. Okay? Kaya kailangan po, makita nyo muna. Okay? Eh, pastor, di na ako makakapag-argue eh. Okay? Kaya nga, pagka mga uh, ganong mga article or ganong mga issues, hindi na tayo dapat nakikipag-debate. Tama? Bakit? Kasi very unintelligible for us to really discuss and debate kailan babalik ang Panginoon? Ah, pre-trib yan, bago, bago makita yung ano, tribulasyon, yung paghihirap, yung uh, tinatawag na antikristo. Hindi na tayo aabutin noon. Sabi naman, hindi, sabi ng Panginoon, nasa kalahating taon eh. Yung, yung ano, uh, first three and a half years eh. Sabi naman ng mga post-trib, ano ba kayo, ang hihirap nyo kausap. Ang sabi ng Panginoon, kung sino naman mag-iis hanggang huli, aliligtas. Natatalo-talo yung mga pareha sa Kristiyano na hindi pa nangyayari yung pinagtatalunan nila. Nag-gets nyo po ako? Kaya ako, lagi ko encouragement sa inyo, huwag kayong makipagtalo kung eschatology ang pag-uusapan. Huwag kayong makipag-us- kayo makipagbangasa ng, ng Facebook dyan. Bakit? It is unintelligible before and unmistakable. Bakit? Kapag nangyari yung bagay na hindi mo inaasahan, nakakahiya. Kaya ako, I believe in rapture. I disagree with uh, William Craig who doesn't believe in rapture. 
I also disagree with uh, N.T. Wright that uh, God is not uh, the God of order. Uh, marami pang ano, ang, ang i-order lang niya, hindi yung sa langit, kundi sa lupa. N.T. Wright yun. No? So, yan yung apat na principle. Okay? Then, pang, itong mga to, basahin lang natin ito. And then, pang-anim, prophetic dreams, visions, and apocalyptic language are interpreted in light of the text itself and how it is used in other texts. Most dreams and visions are followed by an interpretation. Ayan, Zechariah 4 to 6. Daniel 7, 1 to 28. Okay? The apocalyptic imagery used in common by Ezekiel, Daniel, and Revelations are interpreted in light of each other. Okay? Sabi ni John Walford in his book, Daniel, Key to Prophetic Revelation. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, nakakita kayo ng dreams and visions, ano agad ang hahanapin? Interpretation. Usually yun. So when those writers of the prophetic book wrote the dreams, wrote visions, ini-interpret nila yon. So they are not going to leave any coin unturned. Okay? So itong anim na ito, mahalaga, okay, para makapag-interpret tayo ng text. Okay? So mag interpret ulit tayo. Meron tayong assignment dito eh. Activity ulit tayo. Read Zechariah 1 to 8. Interpret the visions of chapters 4 to 8. And how do you reconcile the vision concerning Zerubbabel in chapter 4 and Joshua in chapter 6? Okay? So itong text na to. Okay? Ayan, ilan ba ang present ngayon? Let me just unshare. Oh, wow. We have a good crowd today. We have 19. So, ibig sabihin, ang magre-report ngayon ay hindi 